Hello, today we're looking at the Expert Sleepers ES6, 7 and 3. Very like a welt. probably thinking catchy names bro and I'd agree with you the names don't really tell you very much about what they do what these allow you to do is use those forgotten ADAT ports on the back of your audio interface that your well-meaning manufacturer has given you to expand the mic inputs of your studio and instead put them to much better use as modular outs for your interface so the ES6 and 7 are directly connected with an ADAT cable to the back of my audio interface. And they mean I can put modular level stuff directly into my audio interface. All of the videos that you have seen in anywhere approaching living memory on my channel have been recorded through these little puppies here. They rule. And the other one, the ES3, is the opposite. It's an output module. I now have eight modular strength outputs. So for example, you could just chuck a drum loop straight out of your DAW as a loop and then chuck it through some filters and return it. But you can also output control voltage. So this allows the computer to talk to the modular at modular levels in a modular language. And if you're in any doubt and are saying, oh, I didn't get into modular to use my computer, I want to get away from computers. At the end of the day, you're going to spend a hell of a lot of money on your modular. But those voices, those filters, the effects, the distortion, your sequencing, the absolute crazy wild electronic music play box that you have created can be taken advantage of and used to its greatest effect when it is paired with a computer. After all, Wendy Carlos didn't make Switched On Bark without a tape machine. So this can be that and more. So let's play a little with some of the cool shit that we can do. So first, incredibly badass thing that you can do is to use your modular as a effects unit. So over at the computer, here, um, I have set up a couple of channels. I have a drum break, which is set up to come out of the interface and return here. So I hit play and look, the module lights up because he's outputting a stereo file coming out of one and two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the drum loop and I'm going to stick it through a spring reverb. There's the next. So Back over at the computer, I can hit record. Here is a perfectly A199 version of my audio. And the takeaway here is how bloody convenient that was. I didn't need to convert the audio. I didn't need to amplify it through like an A119 or something like that. The computer just talks at the right volumes happily to my modular, which is ace. Let's do more than that. Let's run it through the Plague Bearer. God, I love the Plague Bearer. No one ever talks about the Plague Bearer, but the Plague Bearer is the ultimate FSU. Uh, 
Um, and perhaps, seeing as I've got a spring reverb laying right next to it, we should get the spring reverb back on the part here. Emphasis. So, let's create a little loop. So that's pretty. Um, and then let's feed that through the output and filter it. Now, the VCF74 is processing our computer tone for us. But I want an envelope. Want some modulation here. So let me feed it. A control voltage made by silent wave software on my computer. Like that. And then adjust that. So, back at the computer, here is the Silent Way LFO. A completely software generated LFO being outputted into real hardware with the ES3. It's kind of amazing actually. You can see that I'm, I can basically combine shapes so square, saw, triangle, sign, and randomness as well. They all kind of get blended together and you get this kind of awesome hybrid shape. And obviously we can use all of the outputs of the ES3, have loads of these, have eight of these going at any one time. Ace. Beyond allowing your computer to send audio into the system, your computer can send voltages as we saw briefly before. However, these can be tuned voltages and control, i.e your computer can become a MIDI to CV converter. MIDI, however, is misleading because it uses control voltage itself directly. And in fact, it is sample accurate. So your computer is able to control your voices in your modular synth um, and do much more than just fire off gates. It can actually create the envelope generators themselves and things like this. So let me just show you how it works. <laughs> So, we have the output of an ES3's channel 1 going to the 1 volt proactive of a Dixie 2. We have that a second voltage lane going to the filter of the VCF74 filter. Um, so what's going to happen is the computer is going to control the oscillator and the computer is going to become the envelope generator for our filter. It's a very powerful system. You can have obviously lots of different voices. You could have eight different things. They could be LFOs, they could be envelope generators, they could be sample and hold generators, they could be sequences you've created, they could be pitch voltages, they could be whatever the smeg you want to come out, including audio, which you could be running through um, the filters a little bit like we did before. So, to the computer. Over here, I have a Silent Way voice controller. Now, this is uh, looks kind of complex, is kind of complex. A voice controller, you basically calibrate it first, and then it is just a case of um, playing the keyboard, comme ça. Like that. But you can see that um, the voice controller is um, spitting out these little envelopes. Um, so let's get them to work. The way that we do this is we go to the little output page and we've got this badass matrix mixer which lets us control. There's loads of outputs from the voice controller but the one that I'm interested in is output 2 and doing this. So what I did just then was allow envelope 1 to come out of output 2 which my modular is here. It's output 2 here and it's feeding into the filter. Um, and so in this way we can blend multiple envelopes, I can actually have envelope 2 mixed in as well if I want. You can create really 
really complex control. It's not just a case of like, oh yeah, it lets me control the modular to a very limited extent. I mean, it, Silent Way really does allow you to create insanely fine-tuned and calibrated um, set of voltages with everything you could possibly imagine, the shapes of the curves, all of this stuff, blending them in combination, blah, 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 blah. And it calibrates perfectly to my oscillator. I've calibrated the oscillator. The other thing that's worth noting about the um, calibration system is that the calibration system can compensate for dodgy oscillators. If you have an oscillator which doesn't track perfectly over the whole range, an old um, rubbish synth, then Silent Way can adjust its curve. It will listen to the oscillator and it will fix the tracking inaccuracy. So you can safely say that you'll get the best conceivable tracking, the full range, and perhaps more than is possible with conventional means. And then just the power of this is the output mixer and just being able to, you know, I could have this second envelope here and kind of make these hybrid. So, I hope you see the inherent possibility here. What is interesting is the idea that if you really only had an ES3, a filter, and an oscillator, and maybe one VCA, then combined with a computer, you have the ability to program a voice. Um, you have the ability to create all manner of modulation for that voice. Um, and to do so in a sample accurate way that can integrate with the computer music making process. So it's quite powerful really. Um, it is very sweet. Okay, so in this example, output three of the ES3 is spitting out a clock source, which is the silent way clock source here on channel one coming out um, and then that leads to a Turing machine like that. So whenever I start the computer it's going to advance the Turing machine with the clock source and then the Turing machine is returning to the computer as a control voltage into the ES7 and over at the computer um, you can see it comes in here and we use this MIDI CV to CC or note generator module um, to convert the control voltages into MIDI. So if I then hit record and come over here and actually enable the sending of MIDI from this conversion to the JV. Oh yeah. So just to reiterate, now, my music thing Turing machine is actually playing the JV1080. Here, thanks to the magic of um, Silent Way. We are clocking the module and then we are converting the module via the ES6, um, 7 in this instance actually, um, into the computer and turning it into notes. And the Turing machine is a random voltage generator. We've looked at it many times, um, but we can loop it. Like that. Nice. And I mean, with Silent Way, you can do some little things like tinker with the range that's available, shift it up and down. Yeah, very Lego welt. Actually, that is extremely Lego welt. That's cool as hell. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Edgy. 
Oh man, that is so Lego Welt. In fact, I'm pretty certain Lego Welt has actually used that actual sound. Of course, the sky is really the limit. Um, I just happen to be sending it out to the 1080. I could be doing all kinds of weird stuff. You know, I could be using things like the Metropolis to control the 1080. I could be using the Metropolis to control the Juno 60, which would be badass. In fact, I'd be a little remiss if I didn't do that. So let's do that. The Roland Juno 60. That rules. So I can literally adjust the M185 Metrop and it changes on the Juno. Like this. I'm cheating a little bit. I'm actually not using the gate channel here. You don't need to, in fact. Um, Silent Way will generate a change in gate, it will generate a gate when it senses the pitch change. Um, so you can kind of get away with just using one input. You don't need to use the gate necessarily. Oh yeah. So, for its next trick, polyphonic CV generation. Should you be blessed with a multitude of oscillators, filters, envelope generators, and VCAs, a silent way and ES3 combo with a computer can spit out um, multiple channels of CV designed to turn a modular into a huge polysynth. Badass. Of course, um, it's not for the faint of heart. You really do need lots of oscillators, lots of filters, um, lots of VCAs, lots of controllers, tons of malts. It takes a while to set up. 
and um, on the computer side you've got to set up this special kind of arrangement of uh, modules in the virtual world but once it's done you can save it uh, and then recall it later so your poly CV thing is ready to be recalled you also have to tune all of your oscillators carefully and save the little um, files and load them up um, again not exactly for the faint of heart but it turns a monophonic instrument into not a monophonic instrument anymore. And of course, um, it's all, um, you know, every oscillator can have a different tone, every oscillator can have a different filter. It's sort of more like the Oberheim 4 voice than it is, you know, a Juno 60 because you can't escape the difference. A polyphonic wasp? Why not? Send voice in there for that overheim touch and then plain our mixing. Huh. Just to blend them together. Get a bit of vector action, pretend we've got a profit VS. And then, I'm using a quantity of malts here so that an offset can control the fall of all four maths. So my four um, envelope generators are the four maths channels. So just one control down here can make them do that. I could use the other one for attack if I was so desirous or come through and adjust them individually, have some long, some short. It is the most awkward polysynth you've ever messed with. But conversely, it's also the most characterful um, and unique one. And my god, in mean, every voice you could be doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I've got an octo controller here, I could be modulating every oscillator in bizarre, fantastic ways. And I can just change the tone. Square waves. Pulse width modulation. Adjust all my filters. What? Starting to get a semi polyphonic MS20. Four man's PS3200 or whatever it's called. And then, let's go over to the computer. <coughs> Sorry. Over here, you can see the little rig. Um, it's set up with these voice controllers, set to poly mode here. Um, and then I have a channel per voice. You have to have four channels for four voices, and each channel is set up to spit its little voltage off to the voice and each one carries its own custom calibration and I'm using the mighty uh, key step here really yeah, 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 yeah. oh yeah oh 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to pull switch modulate this. Just for Nick Bat, a lot of PWM. Bear with. Octo controller rules for such situations where you demand eight LFOs. Hello. In what is quite conceivably the most convoluted thing that I've ever set up to record, um, I am going to show you the final thing, which is the Expert Sleepers Silent Way and ES3 and ES6 and ES7 all working together to do um, a very cool thing, which is um, make the push Ableton Push, which is an absolutely awesome piece of hardware where you can um, basically control Ableton Live as if it is, you know, a circle on, basically, uh, but with its own sort of beautiful things that it does. Um, and I've created a set where you've got the Push controlling a couple of analog voices, namely the Atlantis. <laughs> And it's coming out of the ES3 here. Calibrated and good to go. And then I have the Dixie. Coming out as well. However, um, in order to have a full voice, as it were, a complete um, musical passage, I also have drums. And then these are the tip-top bass drum, snare drum from the 808, and the hats from the 909, and those are also being controlled by the ES3. And the way I've done this, I have used the voice controller here, and I've got it nicely calibrated um, for the Atlantis. I've done the same for the Dixie. And then in the drum control, you create a drum rack, and you put this thing called Silent Way Trigger, so that every time the trigger receives a um, MIDI note from the push, it sends an audio um, out and you have to do a bit of routing to then send all of this stuff out through the ES3 But once it's done, you've got this kind of template map so that you can just kind of make music um, using the push With excellent timing all kind of sample accurate and the other thing you can then do is using the ES6 and 7 you can then print into your DAW all of the suite channels completely separately. You've got obviously eight channels that you can record to, so there's this kind of beautiful separation that can occur. Uh, everything's um, individual, so as a music creation system it allows you to use push as a legitimate way of controlling um, modular. Um, but 
one thing that's just worth pointing out is this idea that push would allow you to unify voices from your modular, voices from other things, your drums from your modular, drums from other things, and can control them all from this one sort of handy interface. However, because you can't stop and start push and record my voice internally with Ableton Live, it's a complete faff. So what I've done is I'm recording this to cassette. I'm not kidding. I'm recording this to cassette. So excuse the sound, because uh, I don't have a external digital recorder. So here's one I made earlier. So that is the Expert Sleepers ES3, 6 and 7 plus Silent Way and a load of other gear. If you investigate the Silent Way um, platform, all of the plugins that you get with it, you'll see that there is just a whole wealth of stuff that we haven't even touched. Basically within there are modules that will allow you to shape, modulate, create um, and control voltages in just a stupidly crazy amount of ways. Uh, there's so much more shaping and fine-tuning that you can do um, that I've not touched on. And so it's important to investigate that if you're interested in this system. Uh, you could create a very powerful modular with really just these modules and a few little um, bits and bobs to modulate. Um, you know, what these allow you to do is to build a system with less 
constituent parts. You don't need as many modulators. You don't need MIDI to CV. You don't need CV to MIDI. Um, you don't need amplifiers. You don't need attenuators, things like this. You don't need quantizers. Um, Silent Way and the ES uh, series can do all of this stuff for you. Um, now, of course, I know that some people will prefer, uh, you know, the physical act of, of, of controlling those things, but it bears thinking about because these integrate in such a seamless way with your computer music making process. They really do. So, um, you know, if you are married to a computer and uh, in order to actually get stuff done, um, which many of us are, I certainly am, uh, I do love making music without a computer. But if I do use a computer, this makes my modular more relevant than ever. Every video you've ever seen that I've done in recent years, I've recorded through these modules because they are just stupendously useful for printing um, separate channels of your modular. And as you've seen, there's just some so goddamn clever tricks that we can take advantage of the awesome stuff our modular can do. The interesting, you know, modulation, the cheering machine, the metropolis, um, taking advantage of, of these amazing, unique um, controllers and actually giving them back to the computer so that our computer can be controlled by them, I think is really interesting. I'm much more interested in CV to MIDI than MIDI to CV. But as we just saw, um, you know, <laughs> MIDI to CV can be awesome because it allows us to use things like the push in, you know, our modular making process. So, and of course, these things work with more than just the Silent Way suite. They work with Reactor Blocks. They can work with Max MSP. They can work with Pure Data. So if you're a Brainiac, um, and I'm sure you are, you will be able to do even more. So check it out. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Love you. And now a word from our sponsors. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider sponsoring me on Patreon. This is a place where you can chuck a dollar, four dollars a month or more to help fund the production of these videos. It helps enormously justify the crazy amount of time and effort it takes to make them and is sincerely appreciated. So please have a look and we'll see you next time. Bye for reals.